So first started teaching robotics at QT in 2011. Uh, 2012 was the, the second year of teaching. And from my previous experience with teaching, I thought you know, the second year is gonna be the easier one, right? I well, did all the hard work the year before. A week before teaching was supposed to start, uh, I fell off my push bike on the way to work. Uh, this was a misguided attempt to get fit. Uh, so I broke my kneecap, it was a very painful thing to do. Uh, and was laid up at home uh, for six weeks uh, on crutches, I couldn't come to work. So what I did was to narrate my lectures from home uh, and then uh, I'd upload those to QT and Michael Milford, uh, played, the, played the, the lectures with the narration to the class uh, and, and graciously took questions. And so that was the way I delivered the lectures. Narrated at home, uh, just me sitting on the couch so you can hear crows in the background, you can hear the rubbish trucks going past, all of that. Uh, and at the end of the semester, when I was up and about again, I uploaded them to YouTube, which was a thing by then. And you know, there were bits of educational material on, on YouTube as well as the entertaining. And, and there it sat. And then sometime later, maybe a year or two later, I, just, I noticed that there were a lot of downloads and views of these, of these lectures and, and people wrote comments and they wrote nice comments uh, about the lectures which were, I mean, put together in a bit of a hurry and the narration was, the soundtrack was far from perfect. Anyway, people really appreciated it and they appreciated uh, the way that I structured the material. Uh, it, it was fairly accessible, uh, not too, th just enough theory and no more. That, that's the principle. So th they liked it. So I thought, well, that's interesting. At the same time in education, there was this movement that were called MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. And institutions like MIT and Harvard were pushing this. Uh, you know, big universities, big rich universities. And they thought, well, we could make our courseware available to everybody in the world. You know, everyone can go to MIT or Harvard. Uh, through the through the web, and so lots of people started jumped on this bandwagon. Everyone was creating MOOCs. It was kind of MOOC gold rush back then, 14, 2014, 15, and so I thought, well, okay, I have these videos which people found found interesting. Uh, maybe I could you know posh it up and and produce produce MOOCs, and so convince QT that this would be a good thing to do. QT had never done these before assembled an awesome team of people, uh, 20 people or something to put these together. It was a year, solid year's effort, not just myself, but all these other brilliant people, learning designers and graphic designers, project managers, fantastic team. And so we created the, these MOOCs, we put them up and we ran them. You know, first one got 10,000 people enrolled, which is very, very gratifying. Uh, and yeah, we ran it for, for about two years, we ran these MOOCs and they did, they did well. But at that point, for various reasons, the university chose not to run them anymore. And that left me a bit sad because I'd invested a lot of my life in creating these. And so then this thing called the Robot Academy was born and we launched that in 2017. So what we did is took all of the content that we developed for the MOOCs so the MOOC comprised about 200 lessons. Each one's a five minute video roughly. So it's 200 five minute videos. And normally in a MOOC, what you do is you stack them all up like lectures, right? And so you, know, you watch an hour's worth one week and then you watch an hour's worth the next week. Very linear, right? And that's sort of okay if you wanna teach undergraduates a particular thing. You start at the beginning and you stack up all the units, right? One after another until you get to the end. But in general, people don't, don't necessarily want to get their information in this linear way. And some people might be interested in just one little subtopic. And if it's a MOOC, then they have to enroll, wait for the MOOC to start, like it's gonna start next August, right? And then go through all the material, they get the bit they want. If we put it all online, it could be viewed either as a linear narrative or it could be random, like a, like a Wikipedia. It's 200 articles about robotics and you can just search them out or you can watch them in a prescribed order. So that's what the Robot Academy is. It's a website that contains all the things we created for the MOOC, uh, but accessible randomly or in order. And that has been phenomenally successful. So I think now it's something like one and a half million lessons have been delivered every minute 
somebody watches lesson. And these are from all around the world. Uh, so it's, you know, it's not just uh, you know, obvious Western countries like the US and uh, Australia, Europe. Uh, you know, I've got students in Africa, in Central America, you know, Bangladesh, Egypt, uh, places where it's probably difficult for students you know, at, to get access to this kind of learning material uh, face to face. I've had you know, wonderful testimonials from people said, who said, even if I went to my local university, they don't teach robotics. Uh, so you know, I can teach people robotics wherever they are. Experience isn't quite as good. It's not face, it's not face to face. Uh, it's hard. I can't give them certificates because I can't do, I can't do rigorous exams over, over the web. Uh, and there's no hands-on laboratory sessions, which is you know, what makes a well-rounded educational experience at university, but it's not bad uh, and it's free and I, I want to ensure that it's always free, available to people anywhere in the world.